some of y'all have been in other committee meetings since we kind of shifted some folks on the committees and stuff. Um, since then, this is the first time that this committee has met. So the first order of business would be to vote for a chairman and a secretary for this committee. Uh, not trying to sway opinion one way or the other, but Mr. Uffman has been the chairman of the Solid Waste Committee for quite some time. Um, but the floor is open for nomination. All right. Any other nominations or discussion as far as a chairman? All in favor? Uh, I'm sorry, do you have, do you have another nomination? Lance Hager, I'll put the second. Okay. All right, we've got a nomination and a second for Lance. We've got a nomination for Clint. No second. All right. All in favor, Lance? Uh, any opposed? All right. And this committee also needs a secretary. Um, I, I've got somewhat, um, but this is the first time that we're meeting with the new members and everything. There's not much of an agenda. I just kind of want to familiarize everybody with where the former committee was and move forward. And we, when we jumbled these committees and stuff up, my thinking was just, and it wasn't, some commissioners thought that I moved, moved them off of this committee because they were opposed to a convenience center fee. That, that wasn't it. I'm opposed to a convenience center fee. That's the pandemic. People losing their jobs and everything else. Now it's not a good time to talk about any kind of fees. Um, I just felt like some of the committees had just kind of gotten stale and there wasn't wasn't any, you know, new input or new ideas uh, coming out of the committees. So we just kind of shifted them up a little bit. So that's where we're at. Lance, it's all good. Minutes or anything from the previous? Maybe if you're in the book. <clears throat> Most recent ones might be in the back. I'm not sure how many of us put the books together. It's been a while since we met. It was October 6th was our last meeting. Nobody said we don't want to have to decide on community center fees. We want to do the whole legislative block. Right. Let them decide. They just kind of bounced back and forth. The legislative body said, Let the committee decide. The committee said, Nope, we're not going to do it. We talked about setting up meetings with GNRC and by county possible Zoom. That's been a it's been a, yeah, it's been a challenge with uh, COVID. The state's not allowing any of their folks to travel anywhere to go to meetings or do anything. Um, our, it's difficult to try to do Zoom meetings at the time of the evening that we meet these committees and stuff. Um, I'm hoping that we can start having open meetings and the public will be able to tell and the state folks will be able to. That's all I had as far as minutes for a previous meeting. Uh, we talked about updates for bids on construction. I had one bid. I, well, that, uh, to give y'all, to get y'all up to speed on that, um, that was rebid. And what we did was we, we took that whole project, kind of took it apart, and broke it up into, into different sections. And the concrete work 
and the installation of the, the compactor was one project and your electrical work to hook it up with a different project. Um, that bid opening was yesterday and the low bidder on that was with the construction. Uh, I was on the construction and the electrical. And the electrical. Oh, the electrical. Yeah. What about the uh, concrete? Yep, that's it. The concrete got, and the electrical. What was it then? Uh, it was just under 80000 I think. Was all of it. Four, I think it was 43000 to do the electrical and thirty seven and then some change to do the concrete work or vice versa. It was right at eighty thousand dollars. I know the last one was like four hundred. Was that for the same amount of work? A lot of work, but the last one was a was a complete project. Um, the last one included uh, the dirt work. Once the once the concrete is done and the and the compactor is put in, there's going to be some. We're going to need to do some dirt work and put in some uh, pressure run gravel. And make a, a level surface for people to drive on, dump their gardens, and things like that. I've talked to the highway department, and they are going to assist us with doing the dirt work and that type of stuff. So that part of the project was taken out. That was a big part of the expense of doing that. And so we just kind of looked at the overall project, figured out how much of it can we do ourselves in county using the highway department and different folks, and how much of it absolutely has to be bid out. I think we're we're on track to get get that going and get started on it here pretty quick. I've got to look at some of the prints and shows there's going to be uh, Port Johns, February right. Port Johns, however long, right. and eventually build bathrooms. Do we need to? Do they need to go ahead and put the piping in under the concrete and stuff? <laughs> For the future bathroom, so we don't have to tear up concrete stuff later. I'll talk to Seth about that. That well, might be put the bathroom, but you know, as long as it's within walking distance, right? Over there somewhere. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 my thinking was we can put the bathrooms pretty much anywhere. It doesn't have to be right at the compactor. You know, right now it, it's in that old trailer, right. but it's not. Honestly, I would rather use a portage on in that old bathroom in that old trailer. It's in pretty bad shape. So, you know, just thinking that a, a bathroom, a bathroom project in the future, um, probably better honestly to start completely over and run new water lines. Uh, we got issues with the, the septic lines and things out there. They they run down underneath where the trucks drive, um, and I, I don't know. it's not a good place to have the sewer lines and stuff run into a septic tank you know, where those heavy trucks drive over day in and day out. So it might be a cost effective just to have a port potty there. Yeah, 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 right. I mean, we, we've, we've got, got water there, there and we've got water in the lines. I mean, there's somebody else that does, but, you know, <coughs> cold weather and things like this. Yeah. Is there a projected start time for... Uh, the bid open was just yesterday. I'm, I'm hoping... Get it done as soon as possible. This, pro right. this project's been on the table for uh, two years. New the equipment, sir. The, uh, the equipment and everything's there. Well, it's, it's ready to go. New boxes are in use. Thank goodness. And after the after the snow went away, they really hit us with the trash. <laughs> yeah. uh, by County, of course, you know, they had just as much snow as we did. Um, a couple of their trucks went down due to cold weather related issues. They weren't able to get down here. And, and we, we used every bit of box capacity we had right. uh, to make it through that. But we made it. So. Who was working out there now? Is the same bunch? Have you heard different people? No, we've, we've had some personnel changes. I, I feel really good about the crew that we've got out there. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's a gentleman named Ricky Bond. That works out there. I don't know if any of y'all know him. Older guy. He retired from Tensco. His wife is still working, and honestly, he just was just tired of sitting at home by himself. So he came and saw me and put in an application. He's been working out great. Uh, 
course, Ronnie's still out there. He's, mm-hmm. he's our main guy out there. Um, I've got a real good uh, kid on, I say kid, he's a, he's a younger man on, on the weekends. He goes to school Monday through Friday, uh, but he works every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Miguel Valdez, great guy, hard worker. Keeps everything clean out there. So I think we've got a, got a pretty good crew. Everything's covered seven days a week, as long as we don't have any major. What's, uh, what's the condition of the lumber up then? It's, uh, it's fine. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it gets used right. every day. You know, it, it's got bumps and bruises. And the whole thing been fixed that was tore up on? Yeah, the only thing, um, you know, it's got little scrapes and stuff on it from mm-hmm. pushing the boxes around and doing things. Uh, the only... The only thing that I can think of that's got that shows any kind of damage are the the steps. Um, they got got a log hung, hung up in the steps or something back when all the we had that windstorm and we had all that brush and stuff out there. They were trying to clean up and a log got caught up in the steps and the wheel. And they had the they used a hydraulic ram and straightened it out best they could, but it's not. Is that machine on the periodic maintenance schedule? It is. And, and who was performing that? Uh, Thompson Machinery. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, it's kind of, when we bought it, we went ahead and got the, the pre, prepaid, it's not prepaid, but it's a pre planned maintenance, maintenance schedule for you know, every 500 hours they come out. They, they actually come on site and right. change whatever oils need to be changed. Every time they do that, they take samples of the different hydraulic fluids, the oil, and coolant, and everything, and send them off to be tested to make sure everything's good. What about the uh, trail handling? Uh, is it being used or utilized? There, is there a plan? I need, I, need to, I need to talk to them about it. We've spent about $1,000 getting it fixed up, getting the tires fixed, getting some airline leaks, and, uh, trying to get it to where that the old truck could be used to move the boxes around rather than dragging them with the loader um, because it's it's less wear and tear on the boxes and on the loader to do that. Uh, it's a little more time consuming to actually load the boxes up on the truck, but I need to find out exactly what the status is of the truck and why they're, I know they're not using it like I would like them to. And I, I, I don't know if it's a problem with the truck or just habit. Uh, they've gotten used to just hooking the, the cable to the box and dragging it where they need to, but it's hard on the rails. So the if, yeah, if you actually pick them up and move them instead of dragging them. Right. So they're not made to put something on the No. They're made to go front and back. That's mm-hmm. it. And hopefully a lot of that will improve when we get the new compact to put in, because it'll be able, you'll be able to Load and unload it straight in. You don't have to put it up against that wall. What about the, uh, you know, I know there for a while we was doing recycle, but trying to separate aluminum and brass. Back off of that during COVID? Or? Uh, we did, but it didn't really have anything to do with COVID. Um, we, and I'm, most of y'all may have noticed that there for a while we had. The uh, trustees from the jail working out there. Well, uh, one of them started getting visitors um, that weren't authorized, getting stuff that he wasn't supposed to be getting. And so we had to we had to stop that uh, that whole program. But it's kind of unfortunate that one bad apple ruined everything. Um, that was working out really well. Those guys were able to get out and be productive. Um, so now all the all the scrap metal is just is just going in the in the bin. We still have the manpower to, to sort it and separate it. Oh, uh, we've got that that same issue caused a buildup of tires. But uh, on the weekends, I've got two guys out there, and that's when one of them is is the attendant, the other one's cutting tires, trying to get that situation caught up. One time you had mentioned trying to get a bigger cutter, big tires and stuff. Is that all down the road? Or yeah, um, I know it's gonna be like 
eight thousand dollars or something. I, and honestly, with all the cuts that we had to do during the budget last year, 116 is, is running real tight this year. Um, so we're going into the next budget season. That's something I'd like to do is try to budget a little money in there to uh, add a new tire cutter, one that is faster and it's three, three or four times as much as what we spent on the first one. But it's also three or four times faster. And better, yeah. It, it'll last longer. It, it's made for uh, the large semi truck tires and the off road tires. Mm -hmm. The one we have now is pretty much just for passenger tires. Mm -hmm. But it was it was bought just to to see if this process was feasible, and it's it's proved to be very valuable. We just need a better machine or more more manpower. Wait, what? Shredder? Huh? What shredder? Started about two hundred thousand dollars. Ones I, I've looked into that. I'd love to have a shredder. We just dump them in there and shred them up. Uh, and there's a, we had a shredder. We could shred all kinds of stuff. We had a shredder. We run all our trash through there, and you could put three times as much in a box. They're they're about a quarter of a million dollars for an industrial size shredder. I. There may be. And that's something I would I would really like to look into. I, those shredders amaze me with the things that they can do. They got they got something big enough you can drop a whole car in it. Three minutes, the car's gone. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know what it would take to maintain it. Um, and I'm sure that it's well, what we would do is probably go on it later. Right, yeah, I mean, we're not going to be trying to shred the car. We keep the metal out of it. If, uh, if, tires if we did just, if we did just tires, tires would be bad. but they're costly. I've talked to other people. Everybody wants one. Very few, nobody has. Them. Rubber recycling people have those. So that's, that's why they charge to come out here and pick tires up and take them back. Because they shred them and they have to pay for that shred. Yeah, they're using it. They're using that chipped rubber for everything. They're, they're paving roads with it. They're, they're they're using it in coal fire plants up north. They're replacing coal with rubber. And, uh, yeah, they did that for a while, but I think they found a problem with the environmentalist. Right. Yeah. So. Somebody found a problem with it, and they, they've gone away from doing that now. Now it's going to, have to go through a more refined process and be made into a bat. Pretty consistent when we keep having issues with uh, employees up there. Is that an employee issue? Is it a pay scale issue? It's a honestly, it's a pay scale issue. Well, we need to. I mean, Somehow or another address. That that job right now, those the highest paid guy up there is making ten dollars and fifty cents an hour. Um, you know, as there's they're probably paying that down to sudden service for the people back there cooking their trucks. Sure. Um, you know, so we we need to work on the on the pay up there. Ten dollars is really about minimum wage now. Yeah, it, yeah mm -hmm. I mean it's the unofficial minimum right. wage as far as I'm concerned. Right. And, yeah, that that job. In my opinion, that job. You know, starting out, it needs to be about twelve dollars, and then the, once they become proficient on the on the loader and everything, I mean, at the minimum, it needs to be a fourteen dollar hour job. When you hand over a quarter million dollar piece of machinery and tell them to be careful, you know, you can't pay somebody ten dollars an hour and expect them to be a professional operator. You know, mm -hmm. or they will be shown. Right. So um, we need to work on the pay and then you know we get the pay right. I, mean, I feel very fortunate that we've got the quality folks that we've got now, but it took me a long time to find them. And that's such a change you need to It is, yeah. I, I mean I feel pretty good about the, the guys we've got. Um Miguel, our weekend guy just started at Nashville Diesel College, so you know, he's got a good year, year and a half that he's 
It's going to be available for the weekend. He said he'll work any weekend and any holiday in the school. He's got a sports fan. And Ricky, Ricky wants to work, you know, two or three days a week. He does not want to work on Saturday or Sunday because that's what his wife's off for. So that worked out really well. And Ronnie's got another job Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so he's available any Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we just had to find the right guys to fit the days that we needed. And we finally did that. When they, uh, do the uh, improvements. Is there going to be any room for repairing the road coming in and out? Um, financially, I, right well, I think I've got a pretty good relationship with the highway department. And so when they come out and do the dirt work to bring out um, some crush run, I mean, there's going to be some expense to the county. Um, for materials and things like that, they said they can work with us as far as labor because they need project to keep their guys busy too. Um, but I'm sure we can get, uh, you know, we can work on getting the, the entrance, maybe target ship this summer. Um, this would be nice to get it all done one time and have a good, good look right. at it. Yeah. Make sure signage is up to date. Mm -hmm. What about uh, oil storage? Is that, is that been an issue to get the approval on that? We've got two fairly large tanks out there. My problem is I, I need to train my guys to, to keep an eye on them. And when they get full, they either call it in or let me know. And I found out this past week, they were just telling people, oh, you can't dump that before. full. Well, then I, I was like, well, who's coming to pick it up? I don't know. So I called the phone and I called the people and I said, hey, our, our tanks are full. And I said, okay, we'll have to schedule next week. <laughs> It was just one of those things that, you know, we got two new guys out there. It was just one of those things they, they just didn't know. And they happened to fill up on a day that Ronnie wasn't there. So that, that's some. Sir? They, they, pick, they pick it up and recycle it. But we, again, we have to pay for that and come in and siphon it out. It gets you reused heat and oil or something. I don't know what they do. I don't know. All I know is hopefully it's not being dumped on the ground in Houston County and it goes away. Right. Just like all our garbage. All our garbage down there by the Texas Tech Center. Yeah. 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 Something else we're going to have to address probably sooner than later is getting some, some sort of waste facility at the west end of the county and the east end of the county as well. Yes, sir. That's one of the things that I would like to get accomplished while I'm in office. Um, it would help alleviate. I mean, if you guys haven't spent any time, I know William has, and I know Lance has. Um, if you're ever just bored and want to do something on a Saturday, go up to the dump or the convenience center about 10 o'clock in the morning and just hang out there for an hour or so. You'll be shocked how many people come through here. I, when I first started having to deal with that, it just blew my mind how much garbage is generated in the county. I, I mean, I truckload after truckload after truckload. And, um, and they, they get real busy up there. So if we had a true convenience centers that that was, and they were just for residents, not the trash haulers and all that stuff, uh, at the far west and far east end of the county, I think that would take some of the pressure off of that facility up there. It would run smoother. But then it would be three days a week, either end. Right. Yeah, just you can do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on one end, Thursday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday on the other end. I spoke with Herb Darrow and, and the sheriff speak about how much trash they pick up on the west end of the county. Right. They so yeah, pick it up one day and a few days later, you think how they've been there. You know, I don't know if that's because they don't have anywhere to put it or, or what. I, mean, I, I see it all the time because I live on the west end of the county. I'll be behind a truck and 
know, this, it'll have trash in it, and I'm driving down the road, and cans and stuff just flying out everywhere, you know, and it's not full of trash, it's just, they got, you know, they're not throwing it out, it's blowing it out. It's not, they're not throwing it out, you know, just being malicious, they just, they toss it in the back of their truck, and then they go down 147, get out there, you drive it 55, 60 miles an hour, it just blows out. Occasionally you see them back. They had that pickup truck being in kind of round it up. Highway 49. Yeah. You talking about that, that gold Ford? Huh? You talking about that gold Ford? I'm talking about the pickup trash. Oh, okay. They uh, there's. They don't want to pull the uh, One of the trash haulers has a gold Ford truck. And he stacks that stuff up on there. And I get calls in my office every once in a while. A, a resident calls me and says, hey, that trash guy just drove down Herman Adams Road or wherever and lost three bags of trash. I don't know how many times I've asked him to you know, put a tarp on it, tie it down. And, uh, well, see, there's a state mandate. Well, he'll, mandate he's, he's, he'll show up down there and that stuff just, I mean, sometimes the bag will be hanging off and it's just <clears> hanging yeah. off by a knot. I mean, I've seen it myself. It's it's one of those things where I mean I would like to tell those guys, look, these loads are coming in here and they're not secure, single packing. But as soon as you do that, they go around the corner and they can dump it on the side of the road and you done made them mad. So that's it. Hmm. I, I don't know what the solution is. But you find it up there. Come in the gate where they see, you know, tarp your loads or whatever. Well, the, the sheriff's department, a couple years ago, they had a whole program up there where they were giving people tarps. They showed up and didn't have a tarp. Here you go. Here's a tarp. Tarp your load. You know, you can put a sign up. Uh -huh. they want to. They want to do that. They, they do what they want, how they want, when they want, where they want. As soon as you start trying to change, that's one thing I've learned. As soon as you start trying to change anything, it doesn't matter whether you're trying to make it better or not. You start you just change it. That's not the way we've always done. Why are you trying to change things? Any other topics of discussion have not come? Old, old type of business. Well, I, I wrote on there convenience center fee. And I I only, I keep that, I think we need to keep that under old business because as the budget committee goes into budget season, things are slowly getting better in Houston County, but I mean, we're, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, that's, that's one of those things I've, I don't like the idea of imposing any kind of new fee, tax, or whatever you want to call it, on the taxpayers at all. But if something has to be done, I think it would be better to do some type of a convenience center fee rather than a property tax that is only put on the backs of the taxpayers. The property tax. That's, I, I, and I, again, I, now is a, it's a hard time to have that discussion, but depending on uh, depending on what our budget looks like, you know, we don't know what COVID is going to do to our revenues and everything for sure. But you know, it's, we need to keep that option open. Is basically all I'm saying. I'm not saying that we absolutely have to do it. We're going to do, we're gonna have to do something, right? I have to do something for other facilities, right? If we want to add, you know, if we want to add additional convenience centers at the ends of the counties, that money's going to have to come from somewhere. Um, I would feel better about a convenience center fee if we did additional convenience centers, and then here's the fee, and here's why right. and you've got these additional facilities. I think that'd be a little easier for people to digest, but. I expect it would. I'm just going to get it. I expect it would be easier. 
I guess, but you don't start it. It's going to take, what, 69 months to get implemented. And if we wait until we can't wait any longer, we don't wait too long. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it's a bad time to have it, but if we don't have it now, by the time we do start to have it, it's really going to be a problem. I mean, it's already a problem, but you know what I'm saying. It's, right. it's just going to no. take that long that, that at some point, you know, at our next meeting, we really need to be thinking about it. And one of the things that I've learned about convenience center fees is, you know, it's not something that you just, you're not doing it one day and you, you do it the next and you're an expert at it. You know, it's, and that's, that's why I, I, I started trying to have the conversation with GNRC. Uh, Becky Caldwell used to be with GNRC. She moved on now. She's no longer with them. Uh, but she has helped several counties and municipalities down the road of convenience center fees. Uh, by county, uh, Montgomery County, Stewart County, you know, they do convenience center fees. Um, and there's you're not, you're not going to get 100% of the people to pay. Um, there's I mean, there's just, there's just so many different aspects to it. Like Lynn said, it's going to take a while just to figure out, one, how are you going to do it? Right. Who's going to do it? How are we going to pay for it? Um, where are you going to locate it? Right. Where are you going to locate it? Because there's going to be, you know, and it's not something, you can't just add it to the duties of this office or that office because of the way state law is, you can't just, you can't put it on, I'm not even going to say office because I don't want to get yelled at. So why do you even mention mom? <laughs> but statutory, statutorily, you can't just add it as an additional duty onto um, some of the other offices. I mean, you almost have to set up a separate office just to do that. You know, contract it out, which is costs a lot of money. I'm going to throw one more thing out there. That's a lot of work. You got to do, and it. I think we really need to decide that we're going to do it and figure out how to implement it and go from there rather than if somebody's going to say, well, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? Well, I don't know yet because, you know, it, that's a lot of man hours that we're all going to have to put into it. And, and to decide to implement it or not based on all of those other things is, is the wrong way to go about it. We need to decide we're going to do it. Figure out how, not the other way around. Uh, that's yeah, a lot. It's a lot of work to do, and, and to come away with nothing. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it, and this is this is where we need to go. Yeah, I think in the past I've used the analogy of you know, when Kennedy wanted to put a man on the moon. You know, they didn't wait till they figured out how they were going to do it before they made that obligation. To go, hey, we're going to put a man on the moon, yeah. and that's kind of where we're at. We need to decide all we're going to do. To and fees or not, and if we are, then if it's evident, yes, it's worth putting the man hours in to figure right. it out. Too many of the commissioners, you know, want to say, Well, I don't want to vote yes for it until I know how it's going to work. Well, we talk three to six months worth of work to figure out how it's going to work. Of course, everybody just say, No, we're not doing that. Yeah. Well, so it's a lot of waste of time. And if you pay up for the fee. Separated solid waste from the general budget. How would that help with that budget process as far as? Oh, it'd be. Convenience center costs us in excess of $450,000 a year. So if we come up with a convenience center fee, cover that. And I think we figured it up at $8 of residence would, would cover that. And then, so you're talking to adding about between four hundred and four hundred fifty thousand dollars to the general fund. So it's, I mean, it's a significant amount of money. Right. Yeah. And it, it's one of those things. That I know, I know how unpopular it is. Um, but it's one of those things that we are one of the very few counties in the state that doesn't do it. I think, I think there's only two or three. People move here, and I don't know how many times I've talked to people that moved here from other counties, and they're like, I can't believe I get to come up here and dump my trash for free. <laughs> and, uh, just, bye. 
man, it's a it's a great service to offer the, the residents of the county, uh, but long term, I just don't see it. It's tough to sustain because you know fuel prices are going up, parts for trucks are going up, I mean, everything's going up. We just we just invested you know three hundred three hundred thirty thousand dollars in new equipment up there. By now, the taxpayers are paying for that. If we had just a, a convenience center fee, and that's all it was, with its own fund that was self-supported, we could convert those funds to other things. I know it's, like I said, it's an, it's a, an unpopular topic. That's why we're here. It's not all fun and games. Anybody had any insight on that? It's all for opinion. I would like to see the legislative body, you know, agree that it needed to be done before we spent a whole lot of time you know, looking in, you know, doing a whole bunch of presentations and looking into different ways of doing it. I don't, I don't want to spend three months putting meetings together and everything, and then we go to the legislative body and it gets voted down you know, 10 to 4. I agree with James. I mean, it's got to be a you know, up or down before we time into it, in my opinion. We know how the basic expense of it. We know the basic expense of it. Yeah, it's the details. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at, you know, probably at least two employees to do the billing and collections and everything else, uh, computer, software, um, that kind of stuff. And our, our local government that does all of our computer software and everything else, they have billing software. And they can help us get it all set up. And it's, it's not that it's impossible to do, it's just, it's going to cost some money on the front end, and it's not popular. But at the same time, I've talked to a lot of people who said, you know, hey, if it's that or a property tax increase, much rather pay $10 a month for a community for $8 a month. Yeah. The property tax is a lot of people run around here. <clears throat> Another, I mean, another thing that we could look at in addition, I think it would need to be in addition to that, not instead of that, would be uh, some scales. I mean, people, now there's a big difference between you know, somebody's grandmother or mother showing up with you know, two bags of garbage that they've collected over the week and need to get rid of. And you know, some of these people show up. With, I, I don't know where some of these people come up with this garbage. I, I don't, you know, they'll show up with truck and trailer load sometimes two or three times a day same person no no it's set outside and got rained on and it weighs up sun you know, right. when they dump it out right. off of a dump yeah. truck and i don't know where all this stuff comes from you know, but if you take a load like that by county they send you across the scale they weigh your truck when it's full you dump it you come back they weigh your truck when it's empty and you pay so much a toll and that, that might alleviate some of that. And I don't know that some of this stuff isn't coming from Humphreys County, Dixon County, Stewart County. That's true. I mean, people may be cleaning yards up or basements and garages or whatever. Imagine the people that want to drive out there and take their garbage instead of paying Jean or somebody to pick it up. Yeah. You know, no more than she charges. You know, it's a good, uh, good rate for. Yeah. Is there in the redesign? And I, I know the scales are just not being talked about, but is there a, a logical place in that redesign? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, the way 
<clears throat> way traffic would be routed and everything. Um, the best, easiest place would be right there at the entrance. As people come in, uh, we could just widen that a little bit. And if somebody comes in with a big load, we could just divert them over. They could go across the scale and, and on over. Okay. Yeah, I've already had that conversation with the state and everything. What scale will they cost? Uh, they're they're pretty pricey too. Two hundred thousand. I I think about probably about a hundred thousand dollars for good quality. And a hundred dollars an hour to maintain it from the time they leave Nashville to the time they get back. Yeah. Plus truck charge and everything else. Yeah, there's yeah, you guys know. <laughs> there's there's some maintenance too. Those yeah. things people get on there. They just pick the brakes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's just one of those. Those things. Anytime you buy a piece of equipment, you want to break, you got to make it. And electronics will be replaced. Both sales and everything else. Now, it's just something I'm throwing out there. You know, it's, I don't see where we can afford it. Right. Well, you know, we, if we do the, if we do a convenience center fee and then you know, we get it to where it's self sufficient somewhat. We might be able to do that at a later date. But, and there there are ways, if we had the personnel to do it, there are ways to do it by a square yard. You know, you've got a, a truck bed pool, you know, you measure length, height, width, figure out the square yardage, and it's so much a square yard. Right. I've talked to people about that too. That way there's no equipment or something. I don't know. I just know we got to need to do something. Seems like the more and more people do it around us, and we don't, they're all being, they're all being funneled to to Houston County. We're 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 the we're the only open free line to get rid of your garbage, but we're very popular. And uh, you know, those guys try to watch license plates, but not all vehicles say what kind of they're from. You know, commercial vehicles. <laughs> It's a contractor that does flooring or whatever, you know, if they're good at Humphreys County. You know, if they got a commercial truck, it doesn't say Houston County or whatever. And you can ask them. But it's it's hard when you got ten or twelve cars up there trying to dump their garbage and everything, you go around and interview everybody and find out where they're from. It's, it's just something that I mean about the airport, is that would that be is that basic county property that it, yeah, I think it, it could be. That was one that I've kind of had an eye as on. An option. As an option. It's a little further out. Um, I think Convenience Center, um, if there was a place in Stewart or just outside of Stewart, between Stewart and Tennessee Bridge, I think it would get used more. Because um, folks that are coming from the lake almost always have to go through Stewart anyway. Um, folks that are in Stewart Probably not going to go out to the airport to dump their garbage. Uh, it's just one of those things you probably have to need to study and find out you know, where the best place for those convenience centers to be. Is it just a county only in property? In the area you're talking about? Uh, not, not that I'm aware of. Um, but I mean, we're talking for just a or just a true convenience center. Yeah. Um, you're only talking an acre and a half, maybe two. Right. It's pretty small. It doesn't doesn't need a whole lot. And it really doesn't have to be right on the main road. Once yeah. people figure out where it's at, they're going to come to it no matter where it's at. Yeah. We do own it's about an acre and a half across the road from the end of the airport, right on right on the road. Yeah. Walked out a few years back. Right. You had to get the trees out of the flight path. Right. So, uh, a convenience center, although not the most attractive thing to look at is people are flying into Houston County. <laughs> um, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be a, an obstruction to aircraft flying in and out. The county has several properties that required during the tax sale. Is there any of them convenient to that? Uh, to that? I'd have, I'd have to look. They're they're scattered all over the place. Some of them are 
close to town. I think most of them are, there's several way out by the lake. Right. Um, yeah, I think any camp somebody would have bought them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If they were good, convenient pieces of property, Chris would buy them. <laughs> <laughs> He'd put a self storage building on it. Yeah. And you got to get that covered. Most of them is just little bits and pieces. Of yeah, it's there. They're half there. They're half acre. 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 I, I don't have anything to add. Um, I, I can't remember which of you guys are new on this. I know William's been around a while. And Chris, you were already on here. You were already on here. How many of you guys? Glenn's new. Brant's new. You guys have any questions or concerns? Or? Well, as far as the convenience, I mean, my opinion. Land owners on property tax. I, I, I just can't keep going down that road. I just can't. Oh, I, I, I agree. And I agree with what you're saying. You don't need to say you know, six months into this thing and have five county come down and vote this, Dixon County, and then we get up here and we do the thumbs down. It's, it's, it's not, it, it's a, it is a monster of a uh, it's just a monster of a problem to try to figure out without knowing for sure whether the county commissioners are going to go for it or not. The county commissioners, the legislative body is going to say, no way, we're not doing it. And why even put forth the effort to try to figure out how we're going to do it? And that's been my argument all along. Well, here's where I go with this. If other counties can do it, we can't do it. Sure. And, you know, and that being the case, I mean, we need to start because we're probably looking at nine months if we start tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I mean, the first thing we need to decide is this or this. Are we going to do it or not? If we're going to do it, then it's then we figure out which of the many different ways are we going to do it. Because as far as keeping track of who's paid, who has it, I mean, there's I've heard, every, a -time job for I've, I've heard of every kind of idea. In some counties, we talk about using window stickers. Some counties use punch cards. Sometimes just, you know, the honor system. Uh, you know, just, but well, there's, before COVID, I mean, I think you're uh, I talked to the Democrats. Nevitt and another guy I talked to, and uh, I don't know if it was Mr. Nevitt or another guy, but he, he dedicated to the gentleman that's over inflammation and collecting and everything. He called. Him. He was willing to come down and talk to us as a group, talk us through some of the headaches that they went through so it would prevent us from going through those same headaches. Yeah, we won't have to reinvent the wheel. But I don't want to waste their time and present a whole bunch of stuff to 14 commissioners and say, yeah. Maybe we don't need to So you're, you're in favor of this. Oh, I don't. Right. It's no. Mr. A, how I mean, you? We're, the county's going to have to have more revenue <coughs> there on something. Are you in favor? If we were to make, if somebody were to make a motion that the Solid Waste Committee sent to the full legislative body the implementation of the landfill fees, yeah, sooner or later we need to do it. Well, if the devil's in the details and getting it all right, right. But I mean, if we're not supporting it, yeah, of course. I mean, you got to do it. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the landfill committee put forth to the full Commission, the imposition of the landfill fix to be figured out, but to go ahead and do it. Mr. Packard has made a motion for the committee. 
motion before the full commission to decide if we're going to start a landfill phase. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second. Do we have further discussion? I mean, this is this is just to try to get it started. To get started. To talk to. Uh, like I say, it'll take us time almost to a year to get going. And it's all wasted going away. I don't know any other answer. If there is another answer, I sure hope somebody will speak up. I'd love to hear it. Love it. So this, so while we've not been on commission, this has been a time eater for everybody. And it's just a uh, I mean, I've had calls. People say, "Well, please don't put scales in there." And then I've heard had people say, "Well, you know, I have my garbage picked up, or I have a dumpster. I don't feel like I should have to pay this." Well, we don't have the choice in steward care. The property we have down at Leatherwood. We pay $5 a month, $60 a year. And oh, by the way, the guy told me prior to COVID that that will be going up. Now, he didn't say why, because they've been that for years. You know. Used to, it was put on your CEMC members. Now, Bow County feels you correct. But uh, <laughs> uh, if we could ever get to the point where Bow County or the person that James could come down and help us talk through some of these hurdles that they've already been through. I, I think that's priceless. I really do. But I mean, I, I think right now with all the you know, mandates on COVID prescription, you know, situation, I don't know that you can get anybody to come out or, or it would even entertain a committee of going out and sitting down talking. I don't know. By June, you might have to make off to us and calm down. Well, there, I mean, there are things that, that we can start to do, you know, conversation that we can have with folks on the phone, getting prices from local government as far as the software, um, putting a pencil to some paper and finding out, you know, how many employees, you know, you've got to have at least two employees. Can't have one person collecting money without having another person verifying it that they collected all of it that's all there. So you gotta have at least two employees. Um, well, it would cost some money to get it implemented, and that yeah. money's gotta come yeah. from somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Could it be some administrative costs? Right. The thing is to not do nothing, but you can only not do nothing for so long. Right. Yeah. Real easy yeah. to say, no, I don't like that idea, right. just stay away from it. But the problem is not gonna go away. And a solution is not just going to pop up and say, here I am. It's going to take some work to do whatever we need to do to solve the problem. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. That needs to be put on the agenda for the legislative body next week. So this is to find a piece of property. We'll kind of start two at a time and we'll start one at one at a time and make sure we get right. Well, uh, do in I think we may get this thing straightened up first. Right. But it's just kind of gives the timeline of how we want to try to get things worked out and how we want to get the building set up. We'll take more pictures, too. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll take more pictures. All right. And you know, getting that thing off the ground and running will take some money. Yeah. More hoppers, fences, right. and side. Supervision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Over the years, 
I didn't know well it wasn't working. Well when we put it in the corner right. and then we started doing it, we saw how you know, and it didn't even they don't count how much money we lost right. over the years of not doing it. Right. And we wouldn't we wouldn't yeah. do it the people that was playing and the people that Now that's it in a good direction, positive direction. So. That was that was a not as big part of the sickness, but we were able to get going and then that was not popular either. <coughs> a lot of times the right thing to do is not talk to it. You know. No. Yeah, right. Any other topics we need to discuss? I look for a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. I'm sorry. Get the second on that one. Uh, thanks, guys. Like I said, I know you know these these issues that we're going to have to deal with are not easy. I appreciate y'all coming to that. Uh, I'll let Philip.